Now I've definitely been guilty of this one. When we train towards skills like handstand push-ups, one-arm handstands, press handstands, it's really easy to train at the wrong progression or the wrong level. There's a couple of reasons we do this. Either the ego or the fun factor takes over, meaning that we play more than we train. So we start working progressions outside of our ability. We can't kick up to a consistent handstand, but we train freestanding handstand push-ups. We can't do a fingertip piano one-arm handstand, but we throw our hand up in the air. We can't touch our toes, but we try and do a press handstand. This is where the 80% rule can come in and be really powerful. I'll come back to that in a second. The other reason we do this is we don't know how to reverse engineer movements, and we don't know the small progression steps for each skill. So for example, we might want to work towards a handstand push-up. So if we have a handstand push-up there, before we can do a handstand push-up, we should be able to do a push-up. Then we should be able to do a pike push-up. We then want to be able to do an eccentric handstand push-up, a wall assist, but at the same time, we need a freestanding handstand and consistency of kick up. We could do the same progression line for any skill, but let's also do a one arm handstand because I've recently done that in a video. So we need a super strong two arm handstand that is consistent. Then we look at the head position change to look at the hand, the start of the weight shift. Uh, we go to the fingertips. So one finger and then we lift. Lift off. So your working sets for these, so where I can do five repetitions, so say a five reps, or where I do a five second hold, could be somewhere here. My one rep might be somewhere here, and then my play might be somewhere here. So the same as we would for a deadlift. So if we are doing a deadlift, our one RM, of 200 kilos, might be there. And then we would work out what our 5 RM is and our 10 RM. So we might start off at 100 kilos there, we might go to 160 kilos there, and you just progressively work down that line towards your 200 kilo deadlift. So if you're not strong enough to lift the 200 kilos there, you wouldn't even play with that yet. You might do an attempt at a heavier weight, but for your working sets, you're gonna be around your five RM, two RM, you're gonna be around here for your working sets. You wouldn't think about hanging out down here too much. We need to sort of do the same thing for the body weight skills. So we need to do two things. We need to be able to assess where you're at for the repetitions that you want to know, and you need to know the steps. If you have a big gap between these steps, so if I don't know what goes in here, here, and here, and I just wanna go from a pike push-up all the way to a handstand push-up, and I don't know what this void is, I'm gonna struggle. I need small steps or progressions to work towards the skill that I wanna to work towards, and then pick the relevant repetitions to get the correct training outcome. And that's not just repetitions, it's time under tension, quality of movement and things like that. So how do we use this 80% in reality? If you had a session that was 100 minutes long, 80 minutes of that session would be controlled reps and sets, and then the other 20 minutes would just be play and messing about. You can obviously play around with those percentages, but that's what I'd recommend that you try and do. So you'd be working towards specific reps and sets, or sets of time. So if you're doing things like planches and levers and handstands, you might be allocating a certain amount of time under tension that you're targeting. If you fall outside of that time because it's too short, the progression that you're using is too hard. So if you're holding a planche for 10 seconds, but you can only hold it for two seconds, the progression is too hard for that particular day. So a good example is this one-arm training session that I done today. So I started with the stretching, I done the warm-up, I done some two-arm basics, some straddle, some tuck. Then I went into some one-arm handstand hold using fingertip. Then I done some working sets of trying to hold five to 10 second holds on the left side, on the dodgy side, and doing some harder progressions on the right side. And then I finished with some play. I just try to kick up into a one-arm handstand on the right, go over to the left-hand side and get something decent on the left for about four or five seconds, maybe take the hand up onto the leg or, or something like that. Now, out of all the movements that I've trained in the past eight or nine years since I've been training like this, the one-arm handstand has probably been the one that I've played with the most. Now, that's a skill that needs thousands and thousands of repetitions, weeks and weeks, months and months, and years for most people to get the skill. Now, most people were gonna get bored of the strict reps and sets, and that's one of the reasons most people don't achieve the one-arm handstand. Now, I found that to keep myself entertained and have fun while I'm doing it, I played a little bit more with it. Now, if I had have done more consistent reps and sets of quality work, my one-arm handstand would be much better now. I'd be working harder skills, 
but I don't even know if I'd have a one-arm handstand because I would have probably got bored with the process. Now with other skills like handstand push-ups, presses and things like that, I tend to be able to stick to that stricter training I would definitely follow closer to that 80% rule. So I recommend you review your training and see what you're doing in terms of that play and quality reps and sets. Obviously it's your journey, do it your way, be you. But if you're not making progress, this could be one of the reasons why. Let me know down in the comments what you think. Speak to you soon.